The Comandante Ferraz Research Station on King George Island in Antarctica is officially Brazilian territory. But on any given day, the scientists collecting specimens and conducting experiments could be from a host of other nations. The same can be said for Russia's Bellinghausen Station, or any other station for that matter. It's a collaboration that Station Chief Alexander Orup says is imperative. So we can uh, observe and uh, get uh, data, scientific data, from this continent uh, only if we will uh, work together. We have some sea stars here that are frozen. Scientists in Antarctica have been collaborating on their project since the first expeditions to the continent more than a century ago. While such cooperation is written into the Antarctic Treaty, which governs the continent, the practice of sharing is as much out of necessity as anything else. Researchers found early on that working together in the harsh and isolated environment on projects could save them time and money. This is especially important amidst today's global financial crisis, according to Antoine Guichard of the Council of Managers of the National Antarctic Programs. It is so expensive that if you don't help each other, usually you just won't manage. And now, with Antarctic science being really a global science on part of understanding how the entire world works, um, it is becoming really vital that everybody works together. Costs of maintaining a station in Antarctica are up, but budgets are not. Consider this. Fuel costs associated with overall operations are the biggest budget item of each research station. In 2008, the price of fuel went up between 60 and 70 percent. The head of Chile's Antarctic program, Jose Retamales, says that leaves many scientists no choice but to work together. Your program set up projects for three years projects. So what are you going to do? You're going to chop down them and you're not going this year. So to try and cope, I think we will have more cooperation. Such sharing is evident in areas where several bases are concentrated, like King George Island on the peninsula. Here, Chile runs the airstrip and provides internet services to the neighboring Russian research station. There is a Chilean town of sorts, with a store, a hospital, and even a post office. It's not uncommon for scientists from neighboring stations to borrow each other's equipment to save the expense of having their own shipped in. On the continent, Italy and France went so far as to jointly build and operate the new Concordia base. Still, Retamala says the human factor of working in such an isolated region can sometimes be a deterrent to working together. It's sometimes difficult between even citizens of your own country because you tend to think on, on just your field and not necessarily on what else you could do with other people. It's been 50 years since the Antarctic Treaty was originally signed and more nations continue to add their names to the accord. The 46 members meet regularly to help foster collaborative efforts among the research stations and to keep each other abreast of discoveries. Additionally, there are both formal and informal networks for sharing information. Part of what makes Antarctica unique is that its remoteness often allows its scientists to separate themselves from the politics of the global stage. Their countries may not get along, but here they can and will work together for the sake of science. Janice MacDonald for VOA News, Bellinghausen Research Station, Antarctica.